appreciate all the folks that have the choice. They're here. Brother Harry Green, in fact, Harry, you don't have to be in here this afternoon, but he is. That's good. Brother Harry Green, I mean it. You're a good man. And, uh, well, I'd like for the Lord of business. Just come out of here in a special way of business, and he might. He might. Let me admonish you all on a couple of things before I go to the form. Uh, number one, in the night services and in any service, it's our nature. When the, when the music starts to want to help and say, you know what, and get right in there and just clap up on the singers. But sometimes, so far we've been kind of guilty getting the clap and getting the beat going for the singers ever even got to the microphone. So let's fix it where we can hear what's going on and know what's going on before we join it. You might not even be able to sing a song. <laughs> I mean, you may get to be all fired up or I'll fly away and we start singing Amazing Grace. And you know so, uh, you know, when it hits, let's all hit. And when it don't, let's all quit. Number two. And number two, I'm telling you, it's ain't nothing new. How many in here has never in your life been in a service where me and my wife minister in the congregation? You never, yeah, I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up. It never happened. Never happened. Okay, that's good. Y'all can be seated. Okay, now the rest of you, listen up. Hallelujah. What I made or may not be preaching this next few days. It's entirely up to the Lord and me at this present state of game. But what I may or may not be preaching these next few days is not necessarily to... Uh, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a good simple word here. It's not necessarily trying to uh, redig and to throw slanderous remarks and to preach things that I know my ear teach you. I mean, if your mind's already made up, I can't change you anyway. But there's some things that I'm going to be preaching these next few days that some of these other young folks has never heard. Understand? They've never heard. So some of the things you've already heard that you could care less about, lean back, relax. But I want these other young folks to be able to have the same choice that you have. I want them to be able to make up their mind whether they like it this way or not. And if they don't, then that's up to them too. But they got the right to hear it straight. So if it's real straight, hallelujah, it'll get you through the game.
Old Testament, New Testament. We'll read both of them. Four seven. Genesis chapter 28. I have a date for 28. Genesis chapter 28. Verse number 12. This is what the book says. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached in, reached the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Verse 16, And Jacob awake out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in his place, and I knew it not. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and he set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it, and he called the name of that place Bethel. New Testament. Book of St. John, chapter number, chapter number something. Hallelujah. Yeah. Book of St. John, chapter number 4, verse 23. I knew the other name. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in false stadiums and state and way. Have a little trouble here. Ain't getting enough sleep. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. There's just some things He ain't interested in. There's just some things He's not interested in. And so, according to uh, according to what the Bible said, Jacob had a dream. He woke up out of that dream. He saw angels ascending and descending down on the ladder. So he took the rock that he used for a pillow. Uh, is that the little boy that was down there? Yeah, well, look up, you guys just slide and stand here. And so Jacob woke up out of his dream, recognized that where he was at was more than just a place out in the wilderness. He took the rock that he had on that, on that, keep on, keep on, keep on. No, good. Recognize the place where he was at was not just a normal place. So he took the stone that he'd been using for a pillow. He went back, got the western oil, took oil. Anybody praise over here? took oil and poured oil on top of that and turned around and said, this ain't no normal place. This ain't just a normal habitation, but something special is here. Now that's why we admonish you like we admonish you. This ain't just a one week getaway. And this just ain't a place that's air conditioned where you have to come into when you'd really rather be doing something else. This is the most special place on this campground. Right here. Right here. And I will tell you this. The true place of worship is not a geographical location. Explain that. I'm going to. If the only place you could worship God was down in Florida, guess what? We ain't got a chance up here in Illinois. 
is the only place that you can worship God. Hey God. Look, if the only place, look, if the only place that you can, you can, uh, that's better, worship God is in West Plains, Missouri, then forget it. What, what's the big deal about trying to have you here right here? Where do we get these preconceived notions and these preconceived ideas that God is located to just one little spot? Does that mean the only time that we're to worship God here in this meeting is when we're inside this one building and the rest of the time act like that he doesn't even know that we exist? Uh, the truth of the matter, young folks, there was a fellow by the name of John Ruskin, and guess what he said? He said, he said, I have seen over the doorway, over the doorway of many church, the words, has of God, has the prayer of the Lord's house. Of the Lord's sanctuary. But did you know I just read to you about a guy in the Old Testament who was out in the middle of a field? No tabernacle, no fans, no drums, no saxophone, no organ, no nothing. Leading back, he said, I perceive that this is the house of God. And let me tell you what makes the difference. The difference in the Grand City Tabernacle, aside from the Lions Club building, the difference in this tabernacle. Aside from some street concert in downtown St. Louis, the difference in this building right now and any other building that you may choose is where God lets down His ladder, where His spirit can be found and His presence can be found. That's the place that we need to strive to be at. The place that we ought to feel the most comfortable. I am not comfortable when I am out in the world knowing that there is a 
they worship Rome. Let's take a lesson of worship here. Are you ready? You may stand with both saints. Let's stand. And you may raise your hands when they're down next to you. Like, no jail. Let's turn it loose and catch the goose. Run out and come to the 
will pay the way. Will my lawyer close us to me? Give me five percent of the door. How does it going up? How's it going up? How's it going up? And guess what happened? I got as high as I could get. I got as far as I could get. Tried everything that I could try. And found out that I was not only up here without any hope. None of you buddies was up here with me. Not when I really need you. I'm going to be up here with you.
so many young lives that's never had the opportunity to hear what some of the rest of the folks hear all the time, or used to hear all the time. Could it be that there's a young life sitting in this congregation right now saying, I didn't know. I didn't have any idea. I didn't know. But now that I know, I want to do something about it. And I want to do something about it today. No, everybody's not going to leave this camera at the church. But I didn't drive all the way up here to find out who it was. I'd go all the way up here to find out who it was. I want you to get the back of hands. Heights and done with the first one.
But Lobotomy wanted to be in youth camp. And I'm sure that Scott wished he could be with Lobotomy this week, and maybe his heart is with uh, His heart is here, and not where he's at. He's kind of half part this week. And, uh, but where is Sister Ruth at?
I want to again state for the fact that of all the campers and all the young folks here in the tabernacle that haven't heard some things and um, ever preached on or ever mentioned. And we only have a short few days to cover several of those things. For the weather, I covered a week's supply in about 45 minutes today. And um, all ministries are different. Did you know that? We're different. Not only do we preach different, we have different personalities. I mean, that, uh, I, I threw a lot of criticism before folks found out that one don't do any good. I threw a lot of criticism for illustrated messages and uh, things that I do. I drew a lot of criticism. And, uh, but but uh, I, I ended all of that by telling them that God knew how I was going to preach before he ever called me. I mean, if this ain't the route it should have gone, then the neighbor boy down the street should have been up here, and I could have been doing what he's doing. So God picks different personalities, because different personalities can deal with different things that other folks can't. You very seldom ever heard me get up and, and preach a message on end time prophecy. <clears throat> Number one, <laughs> I don't know much about it. Number two, all the forces in the book of Revelation. I don't even know who's speaking. Let alone where they're all going to be going. There's just some things I don't understand. There's some things I don't understand. But there's some things that I do understand. And so God allows me to work on those areas. Other men uh, that, that can uh, handle other things. And so I'm just going to do the best of what I am and what I got. Am I preparing you? Huh? Hallelujah. Well, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel. Back in, uh, back in 1975, I got saved. In 1976, I started full-time in the ministry work for God. In 1977, I married my sweetheart, and that was the first year that we started youth camps. We were back in 1977. I'm not sure that we do. Where's my wife? Honey, did we do this one in 77? Does anybody know where I was at in 77? Did we do this one? 78. Brother Gurdon. Brother Gurdon was the night speaker, and I did the days. And in 78, I, I thought, right off of the platform in the old tabernacle. I got it. Woo, did I ever get it. But um, it dawned on me that I got him like a lot of folks get him. And so uh, I'm really going to get him today. I'm really going to get him today. Elementary message from an elementary preacher. I got to preach things that I understand. And I understand this. So in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter number 17, Hallelujah. I'm telling you what I need in the worst way. I need a lamb. L-A-M-B. I need a lamb. A lamb. A lamb. A lamb. You want me? That's kind of like a sheep. Your okay, set right there. Don't shed nothing you said. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter number 17. Verse number 40. Brother Thornton Stanley, I need a room. It's back there in that closet. Just fly it up there. And he took his staff 
in his hand and in his hand, chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. He put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And the sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. You know what I want to preach about today? Huh? I want to preach about it, and I may have to fake the title after a while. But I want to preach about all of them sins, and all of these hindrances, and all of these things that we're chucking rocks at, but we're not cutting the head off of them things. I want to talk about all of them sins and all them problems that keep reoccurring every revival, every weekend. Every revival, every youth camp. Every move of God, every youth camp. The same things over and over and over and over. As some of you young folks from the Pentecost Church in Evansville, you have prayed over the same things until Brother Bell Bush is a nervous wreck about something. Over and over and over and over again. Some of the folks from Bethel Chapel, the things that you get the victory over while Brother Bell's preaching, you have to get the victory over again while I'm preaching. And while Brother Johnson's preaching. Over and over and over again. And this is this is what's bothering me. If the power of God and if the blood really isn't capable of giving us the victory the first time, then what are we doing here in the first place? I mean, the power of God, it's not like a drug meeting that you have to keep going back to it every time to keep getting that, that same high. The power of God is a higher experience every time you make your way to God. I can't understand why we're letting the same sins destroy us over and over and over time and time again. Let me tell you what it's almost like. It almost seems to me like, folks, that the word victory, it almost seems like victory is not in the vocabulary of the Pentecostal church world anymore. I mean, revival is in the vocabulary, and um, uh, fellowship is in the vocabulary, and deluxe nachos with sour cream, but I'd like to have one right now, is in the vocabulary. And coke and concession stand, that's in the vocabulary, but it almost seems like the word victory isn't in the vocabulary. The reason I can say that is, in this very meeting right here, I have talked to different young folks and come up to visit with me. And, 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 and so, yesterday, today, say, same, same thing. I said, well, but what about, I thought, yes, well, how come, I can't understand, well, I just, you, you, I can't understand how come we can't understand that there is such a place in God that you can get, that you can have the victory, you don't have to pray through to have revival, you can pray through. You don't have to get excited to have you get. You can come to you and get excited. I can't understand where we come up with a philosophy that you can't keep the victory the 24 hours a day serving God. I don't know where we got that. Unless it might be the fact that what some of you all are calling praying through and getting the victory is Maybe what you call praying through is today, when my wife got through preaching, you gave her a standing ovation. Remember? That's wonderful. Should have been 100% participation. I suppose the folks who didn't get up didn't believe it. Guaranteed he ain't got the victory. I guarantee it. When Brother Webb got done today, folks, great, wonderful. We loved it. We liked it. And everybody did. But I guarantee you the folks that didn't, didn't have the victory. So we gotta, we got to ascertain some facts here. 
You can't hardly have the victory unless you're victorious over things that get in your life and in your heart. You cannot have it. Well, it will hurt me because we all got to go to supper or do something. I absolutely have found in this Bible where the children of Israel fought the same battles with the same people over and over and over and over. If they wasn't fighting the, the para uh, the parasites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Joyites, they was fighting the Joyites and the Hivites and the Hittites and the parasites. They were fighting the, I mean, the same battles over and over and over. My question is, why didn't they cut the head off of them dudes in the first place and not have to go back and re-sweep up the trash again? Why can't we put it all in one big garbage bag, set it out beside the road, and let the trash truck haul it off? Why do we have to keep throwing the same kind of garbage in our home and our heart can't need to revive? Why do we have to keep doing it all the time? I want you to understand something. If God is bigger than all of your troubles, bigger than all of your cares, God is bigger than it is. If God's as big as you say he is, why don't you let him be? If God can do what you say he can do, how come you don't let him? I mean, if God can save you, if he can fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, why don't you have it? Or why can't you keep it? Some folks don't get it. Shout now or forever hold your peace. Some folks don't get it. I'm telling you, one night revival in a service in the, in this United States of America, we was having a move of God. One young lady prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I guess. Next day, it was out on her bicycle riding up and down the street in her bikini. Oh, God. Next service night in the door, they come. Look, talk in tongues. Now, come on here. Set up and take notice at me. Come on here. Wait just a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That ain't right. You know it ain't right. And you know that God's a thousand miles away from that kind of stuff. I'm going to be absolutely factual and tell you that the victory in God is for whosoever will. All you've got to do is want to be delivered. All you've got to do is want to be. That lady that walked up to me, and I must tell you this, she walked up to me in that revival. I've told it before. Walked up and she said, uh, I want to, as a preacher, she said, I want to get saved. Okay? What we do, Sister uh, Sister Carol, what we do, Sister Carol, is we all go around the altar and we slay snot and we get 25 Kleenexes and we throw it all around the floor and then we come back the next night because the first night wasn't enough and we come back she just sat there and look. And, and, uh, how do you explain to somebody how we do it? You can't hardly. So I looked at her and she said, if you would have just anointed me with oil, I believe the Lord will save me. Hand me that bucket of oil, buddy. We prayed. She looked at me and she said, is that it? And I said, that's it. And she said, okay. Was it it? Still saved by the power of God. Serving faithfully in that church. Hallelujah. Next night she walked up and she said to me, I am. Uh, I uh, know she wasn't there next night. I told her halfway through the service. She come through the door with a bowling ball. She'd been. And she said down there, they're smoking and drinking, cussing. And I feel bad about that. Would you know me with all of that the Lord would deliver me from that? Sure. Be glad to. Be glad to know everybody else. God, I pray you. She said, is that it? And I said, that's it. Next night, in the door, I said, Bowling balls, yes. Cigarettes. Ooh. Lord, in your precious righteous name, I, it, I, I just would love for you to, to touch this um, uh, fiery furnace. <laughs> God, deliver this roast back from cancer in your room for me. Next time she comes to the door, it didn't work. Do it again. <laughs> One difference in that lady and a lot of folks. She wasn't content till she had the victory. And she knew she didn't have the victory until she had the head cut off of that. She got it that night. That's when she woke up and she said, my husband's never been saved, never been in a church. Would you pray that he'd come tomorrow night and get saved? Pray, get saved. It's getting bigger. I wish you'd guess that we pray through the next night. Victory. And if it can work in one location, why can't it work in every location? If God can save me and give me the victory in 75, and I still got it right.
person. Yeah, he just feels sorry for the way some folks look. And, and he blesses them because they're, they look the way they do. Why, now you know that ain't right. You know that ain't right. He can't help the way he looks. Listen to me. Listen to me. What I meant was, Brother Ward can't. Brother Ward can't help the way he looks. We're talking about you. Listen, you can have the victory if you want the victory. I need to move a little bit farther. I mean, you know why? You know why I really like David? I like him because he's a teenager when he went through some of the things that he went through. Well, I, I mean, I know that he, that he did wrong things, and I know that he had murders committed, and I know that he got the flesh out of control. I know that, but I also know that he was never satisfied with a partial victory. He was never happy with a, with a just a fleshly scourge. He didn't want to quit until he knew that everything was where it needed to be. In fact, one particular day, I'm going to have to use this mic because the other part of this is going to be used in a minute. One particular day, one particular day, little David was uh, down there tending the sheep. Come here, look like Just get out of here. Bad. Yeah, you're good. 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 One day, the lady was out there here. She had a whole bunch of sheep. We had this one he never could do anything with. You know, he just could never do anything with. So while David was down there one day, he come along. Instead of coming by himself, he got a bear. Go right there. Good. Here they come. They saw. My experience is being taken away. I need to pray. David said, Hold it! Wait! Hold it! 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 Hold Hold it!
that I do anything that I don't have to think about. My position dictates that I just can't merely run off and point to the problems. My position dictates that for that boy's sake right there, I got to kill them things. I have got to kill them. Are you listening to me? Men of God in the tabernacle, our position dictates. We can stand there with a chair and whip and put on a circus for years, but we have got to kill those things. We've got to do it. I've got to do it for him. Hold this, him. Down the aisle she walked to 
but I can't help what them boys think. He that looks on a woman, hold it down. I need to get this out of Garfield. He that looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with shall live with her in my heart. Well, I can't help with If it ain't in there, I'm not preaching to you no more. If it is, you're going to have to hear it again. You know why? Because I can tell by some of y'all's expressions, you ain't ready to kill that cat yet. Pray, folks, pray. I ain't done yet. Brother Miller, where you at? Brother Miller, yes, sir, yes, sir. Kind of rehearse it with your youth group. Do you remember what I said two years ago about the eye makeup? You remember how I closed it? If you're not one, then you remember what I said? Okay. You remember? Okay. Two years ago in this very tabernacle, I proved to everybody that eye makeup in Ezekiel, I showed it to you too, was uh, one of the main ways that everybody looked up at me. Well, do you know I'm good at paper nails now? I'm telling you, I can prove in the Word of God that that is the main drawing, calling card of the heart in the Old Testament. Prove it. I will. A whole and a whole hour. They sat upon their stately bed, perfumed their stately bed, decked themselves with ornaments, and painted the eyes. And they did that to draw attention to their profession. Mary Kay ain't okay. Maybelline, hallelujah, it's not keen. I'm trying to make some, a statement. I'm talking about the victory. Man, 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 I want the Lord to help me in your submission. That time you get the worm turned on now you're, and turn it black on your chin. You can't have the victory. Oh, yeah. Come on, brother. Let's go. 
I mean, last night, Brother Ward was a preacher in the band. <laughs> man, it, ooh, he was a telling it right. He's a telling it right last night and a telling it to hide. I loved it. And Brother Ward jumped up and was telling us that we need, we need to go out this world and, and send the light. We need to take the light out into this world. How many agree with that? We need to take the light out. All right. For those of you that ain't got the victory, you need Oh. 